Brett Favre was one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game. In his 20-year career, Favre made it to 11 Pro Bowls, won three consecutive MVP awards and a Super Bowl, and retired as the all-time leading quarterback in passing yards and passing touchdowns at the time. In fact, his career was so storied that when it came time to vote on him for the Hall of Fame, not only did he get in on the first ballot, but the decision process took just six seconds. Of his then-record-breaking 508 touchdown passes, perhaps none are as crazy as this one. This is the story of a time that Brett Favre threw a touchdown pass just seconds after suffering what appeared to be a game-ending concussion. October 3rd, 2004. It's the Green Bay Packers hosting the New York Giants at Lambeau Field. For Green Bay, this feels like a must-win game. They're just 1-2 to start off the season, and they're going up against a Giants team that went 4-12 the year before and was being led by Tom Coughlin in his first season with the team. I made a video about a week ago about how Coughlin almost became the coach of the Giants back in 1993, if you want to check that out in the upper right corner. As for this game, it's a defensive battle. At halftime, nobody has scored, and Brett Favre has not had a good game. In the first half, he went just 8 for 14 with 58 yards and an interception. The Giants' defense held him in check. On five drives in the first half, the Packers punted three times and turned it over the other two times, and they never even crossed midfield. But when the third quarter rolled along, Favre's offense finally started clicking. An 11-yard pass to Donald Driver to start off the half, a pass interference on another pass to Donald Driver to get into Giants territory for the first time today, and two more passes to Donald Driver later, and they were inside New York's 30-yard line. It was second and six. And then, this happened. Favre gets driven to the ground by William Joseph, banging his head hard on the ground. Offsetting penalties were called on Favre for intentional grounding, and on Joseph for a face mask. Favre suffered a concussion on this play, and came off the field. Before talking about what happened next, we need some context. Obviously, the game today is drastically different than it was in 2004 from a player's safety perspective, especially when it came to concussion protocol. Nowadays, if you have a concussion, you're done. But even in 2004, for the most part, if you suffered a concussion during a game, you were missing time. It wasn't a hard and fast rule like it is today, but concussions knock people out. As an example, just two weeks prior, San Diego Chargers quarterback Drew Brees left during the third quarter of their game against the New York Jets due to a concussion. He was replaced by Doug Flutie. And in Week 1, San Francisco 49ers quarterback Tim Bertay left the game for a half against the Atlanta Falcons after the sack by Roger Coleman. He was replaced by Ken Dorsey. Keep all this in mind. If you were a quarterback and you were knocked out with a concussion, the backup was coming in. But this is Brett Favre we're talking about here. This is the guy who has the all-time record for most consecutive games started. By the time his Iron Man streak ended, it was at 297 games, which is a record that might never be topped. For some perspective, as of this video, Philip Rivers is the closest active player, and he's at 235 games. He's got a long way to go. As Favre was out of the game, he was standing on the sideline with head coach Mike Sherman. Sherman asked him if he was okay, and Favre said that he was. So as Sherman said, he put him back in, even though the doctors hadn't cleared him to come back. After missing two plays, he comes back in on 4th and 5, where the Packers opt to go for it instead of kicking the go-ahead field goal. And sure enough, on 4th and 5, Brett Favre threw a 28-yard touchdown pass to Javon Walker. One minute after suffering a concussion, somehow, he made some magic happen. Eventually, team doctors stepped in and advised Sherman to get Favre out of the game. And after the game, Sherman said he was wrong for putting Favre back in. In the end, Favre got replaced by Doug Peterson, who went 7 for 17 with an interception, and the Packers lost the game 14 to 7. The following week, despite missing practice due to a concussion the week before and the tragic death of his brother-in-law in an ATV accident, Favre would be back to continue his Ironman streak in a Monday night game against the Tennessee Titans. Green Bay lost this one, but they eventually turned their season around and finished 10 and 6 atop the NFC North. In today's NFL, there's no way that anything like this can ever happen again, and with good reason. And to any athletes out there who might be inspired by this, you're not Brett Favre. Protect yourself. This is the ultimate do not try this at home play. I think Joe Buck summed it up best. Only Brett Favre can pull that off. Special thanks to all our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a Patreon and request future video topics in the description below.